Okay, I have something different to do uh, with new projects at SMG Studio, and I just received from Smith Brothers Hobbies, from my good friend Dave there, this uh, Estes Space Shuttle uh, kit, which they don't make anymore. They haven't made it in years. In fact, this is from like around 1981, and that's when I had one, and I flew it very successfully to a very high altitude, and the shuttle came off, and it came down, glided all the way down, and of course the boosters came down in a separate parachute. We have one. I'm going to take a look at it right now. It just showed up and we're going to build this and you're going to get to see it fly. So here's the kit. It's in pretty good condition. It came from a collection. Uh, you can see the very low price I paid for it. I got lucky. It's damaged inside. They all are because of the way that they packaged them. Uh, you can see there's the nose of the shuttle right there is bent. Uh, one of the engine bells is bent over. Uh, this tube is supposed to be round. It's really not anymore, but I think we can fix that. And this might be a BT-80. If it is, I just happen to have some BT-80 tube right here. Because after all, we do make rockets at SNG Studio. The website is SNG Aero. And if you want to get a Steve Neal designed rocket kit, we sell them at SNGAero.com, I believe. So up, the link is up right there. Let's open this up. So here we go. We're gonna cut the seal for the very first time. I got the label off. Let's cut this open. This has never been opened since about 1981. And we're gonna take a look in here. First thing I wanna do is pull out the vacuum form parts. Um, very fortunately, all of this is in good condition still. A little warped, but not bad. This is a tragedy, right right here. That's the nose, and I don't know uh, if there's much we can do to fix that, but we're gonna try. Uh, here's the body tubes. Uh, of course, these are, for, these are for the SRBs, solid fuel boosters. This looks like it's it went back to being round. Well, it's a little not round, here, as you can clearly see, it's more oval. However, we do have parts that fit inside that that could put it back to shape. These are, I believe, the tubes that go up inside for the uh, extended fins that make this model stable in flight. Uh, here's all the, uh, we got decals here somewhere, and I'm wondering, are they still in good condition? Um, these are all the templates, uh, be part of the experiment. Hmm. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I don't see any decals, so I guess they are in this bag here. I'm just, if they've been sealed in this all this time, they're probably still good. Let's find it. And here we go, here's the decals, and they're in very good condition. Now, the ones on the Saturn 1B that I also got from Smith Brothers, they were 55 years old. These aren't quite as old, so I'm, they're not even that yellowed. They're in really good condition. So we're gonna, we're gonna scan these to a high resolution file. Should I screw them up, I can print out a new set because if they're all in white, I can cut it out and put it on white, and it'll work. Some of these have to be on black, but that's okay because my printer will paint black and it will paint clear and it will paint uh, print gray, it just won't print white. So that's gonna be great. All the rest of the parts look to be in good shape still. Uh, there's balsa parts here. These are the fins that keep the whole model stable. And in case you're uh, wondering what it is I'm talking about exactly, I think it shows you here in the instructions. These have to be on here. These are the SRBs, solid fuel boosters. And these go inside them because uh, the main rocket engine is in the fuel tank. And these stabilize it in flight. Because if we didn't have these, we don't have uh, onboard computers controlling the gimbals and these uh, on the engines and also you know these wouldn't do a whole lot so those are meant for when it's coming back and re-entering and landing so uh, but that's how it works you can see how the engine goes in right there you can see how it goes in right there 
So that's all in good shape. The, the one thing that is not in good shape is this. And I'm, I'm gonna see if I can pop that off and pop it out. Okay, as it turns out, uh, these parts here, of course, uh, for the main fuel tank, um, put this back to round again rather well. So that's really good. Now what I've done, this is in perfect condition, is I've taken this out, just taped it together temporarily, and I tried to get this back. Uh, my hope is, is that this is the top, and I think it is, and so now we're going to place the camera like that, we're going to hold this up like that, and we're going to try to fit this on, and I do believe it does go on that way. Uh, it does not go on this way, obviously. So this is pretty bad under here, but I can kind of reshape the plastic a bit. I can hear you now, Elliot. I can hear you now. I can hear you. Um, look at that. That's almost back. And, you know, and a little bit of putty on that because the part that matters the most is that part right there uh, showing-wise. And that's, that's not bad. That's going to be okay. I mean, it's been sitting around since 1980. What I'm going to do is tape some maxing tape that I am using this as a stand for. And you can't see anything but my hands. <laughs> I think that anyway... <laughs> I'm going to tape this on so it can maintain its shape for a while. So, there we go. Uh, everything else in the kit is in really good condition. We don't have any issues, and we got a nice shovel there, and we got a nice booster, which, of course, eventually it will fit on the back of, like so. And this is going to fly. And I have such fond memories of doing this because when I first met my late wife, Jilly, uh, I built some rockets. And this is before I learned how to fly radio-controlled airplanes, and we used to take them over to the Apollo field. We didn't know that it was illegal to fly them there. It certainly is now. Back then, it was still too near an airport, but we didn't know that. But we flew there for quite some time. One of the rockets, besides the Saturn V, the uh, Mercury, uh, uh, Redstone, and a few others we flew, was the space shuttle. And this space shuttle... Do, 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 do was just wonderful because it came off and it really flew quite well and it circled down and down and down and landed in the cornfield and I couldn't find it, but I did find it. Actually, my dog, Wookie, found it. Yes, his name was Wookie. Anyway, we're gonna make this fly, so this is the first part of this uh, video. We're working on the space shuttle. We asked the space shuttle, and we will be back also this week to the uh, <laughs> restoring my famous King Kong Transamerica commercial from the 1984 Olympics gorilla head that was in storage and rotted away. We're gonna get this working. Uh, for those of you that are tuning in to just the rockets, uh, I've been a makeup effects artist for years and an actor in movies and all this stuff. And this is one of my original heads from one of my original gorilla suits that was used in film and TV for a very, very long time. And we'll be restoring that. We'll be getting back to that. So if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe. Please hit the like button down there. It helps a lot. And uh, I'm glad you're enjoying them. And we'll see you on the next video.